Having joined in the Song of the Angels in the Holy Holy, we then begin the great Eucharistic prayer, which is always addressed to the Father. Once we begin the Eucharistic prayer, we have the invocation of the Holy Spirit upon the gifts of bread and wine that we've placed on the altar. And this is important because we're calling down the Spirit of God on those gifts. They could hardly be more ordinary, gifts of bread and wine. And we're saying to God, breathe into these gifts to make them more than bread and wine. And the roots of that invocation of the Spirit are very, very deep. They take us way back to the beginning of the biblical story where God, we're told, picks up a lump of earth, good rich soil, and then breathes his breath, his spirit, into the soil, and what do you get? The human being, the creation of the human being. And similarly, in the moment of Pentecost, we're told Jesus breathes on the disciples. It's the same breath, the same spirit. So just as soil becomes a human being and these disciples locked in their upper room because of fear, they become a, a church that explodes out onto the streets of the world in mission. So they are transformed by that, that breath. And we're saying to God, do what you have done before. Breathe upon these gifts of bread and wine to make them much more than bread and wine. Transform these gifts by the power of your spirit as you've done before into the body and blood of Jesus Christ crucified and risen. Make him here and now, not once upon a time. And we make that prayer in faith that God will do now, here and now, what God has done before. And then we tell the story of the Last Supper. Now it can be tempting to think of the Mass as a kind of role play of the Last Supper, but it's much more than that. It's not just remembering something that happened once upon a time, it's remembering with such power, in fact in the power of the Holy Spirit, that what we remember becomes present. So that the words of Jesus are spoken by the priest. Again, the priest doesn't have words of his own to speak. He says, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body. He doesn't say, for this is the body of Jesus. This is my body. So it's the word of Jesus being spoken through the priest over the bread and over the wine. This is my body. This is my blood. And what we believe is that the word of Jesus here and now, not once upon a time, the word of Jesus has power enough to take bread and wine and transform them into the body and blood of Jesus crucified and risen. So that the whole mystery of his death and resurrection, the whole event of his death and resurrection are present here and now, not just once upon a time. So that just as the breath of God transformed a lump of soil to become the human being, just as the breath of God became the power that transformed the early church from a cringing crowd into a, a powerful missionary community, so too the breath of God, the word of God spoken into the bread and wine, transformed the bread and wine to become much more. And in transforming the bread and wine, the promise is made of the transformation of everything, of us, our lives, all that we've brought with the bread and wine, even the cosmos itself, will be transfigured. St Paul says the creation itself groans in a great act of giving birth. So that just as the bread and wine represent so much more, so too when we speak about the Spirit's transforming of the bread and wine, we're looking to the final transformation of everything by the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Again, it was the spirit, the breath, breathed into the corpse of Jesus that raised him from the dead. So that bread and wine are raised from being just bread and wine. And that becomes a promise that everything will be raised into the fullness of life in this great act of giving birth. <laughs>